Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Vladimir Zelensky? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. A recent pre-release video I uploaded on Patreon is the case of Diane and Rachel Stoudy a mother-daughter team who used antifreeze to kill their victims. In the case of Zelensky, I will first look at the background, and then I'll move to my analysis. Vladimir Zelensky was born in what is now Ukraine on January 25, 1978. His father and mother were both Jewish. His father was a professor and computer scientist. He worked at a university in Ukraine. His mother was an engineer. Zelensky's great-grandparents had been murdered during the Holocaust. German troops burned their home to the ground. His grandfather had been a colonel in the Russian army during World War II. Zelensky grew up as a native Russian speaker, but in school he also learned Ukrainian and English. He went to college and earned a law degree in 2000, but he never worked in that field. It appears his interests were more in the entertainment area. Before he graduated from college, he was active in theater, and this is where he put his energy. At age 17, he joined a comedy team that was in a competition. Eventually, he created his own television production company. In 2003, the production company started producing shows featuring Zelensky. In September of the same year, Zelensky married. He and his wife would go on to have two children. Zelensky was featured not only on television, but in several movies from 2008 2017. Beginning in 2015, Zelensky starred in a television show titled Servant of the People. He played a young high school teacher who published a viral video and won the presidential election in Ukraine. Zelensky's production company registered a new political party in March of 2018, which they named Servant of the People, which of course matches the TV show title. Zelensky initially claimed they had no intention of running for political office Rather, he just wanted to ensure no one else would steal the name. He announced his candidacy for president on December 31, 2018, after months of making ambiguous and cryptic statements about his intentions. Zelensky ran an unusual campaign against the incumbent president. He relied largely on social media. He generally avoided the mainstream media. His campaign rallies were essentially stand-up comedy routines which I think actually happens a lot with politicians, but in his case, it was intentional. He never really explained his policy platform, but he did mention that he was anti-corruption, which I hope any world leader would be. It's hard to find a candidate who admits to being pro-corruption. He wanted to bring professional, decent people to power and modify the tone of the political establishment. Zelensky won the election with ease, although many people doubted his loyalty to Ukraine, believing that he was essentially an agent of Russia and would betray Ukraine. On May 20, 2019, he was inaugurated. Now he was doing more than just playing the role of the president of Ukraine on TV. He was actually the president of Ukraine. Initially, he was well liked by many Ukrainians. They viewed him as somebody who would rid the country of corruption. He launched a massive road construction program and expanded digital services across Ukraine but then it seems as though his popularity ran out of steam. In March of 2020, his chief of staff's brother was caught selling government posts, but Zelensky did nothing to intervene. One scandal after another started rolling in. Zelensky received a lot of criticism. By September of 2020, his approval rating was less than 32%. Many people considered him to be just as corrupt as prior Ukrainian leaders. He maintained an unusual relationship with the media. He had a clear disdain for traditional journalists. He did not seem to be able to tolerate any criticism. He surrounded himself with former friends, appointing them to various positions of power. He became increasingly isolated from the world. As 2022 approached, Zelensky didn't seem to take the threat of a Russian invasion seriously. Essentially, he made fun of Ukrainians for panicking. As it turned out, the citizens of the country did have cause for concern. On February 24, 2022, 
Russia invaded Ukraine. This war has cost many lives and induced fear about the use of nuclear weapons. Many are afraid that it could lead to World War III, which could mean Armageddon. Since the beginning of the war, Zelensky's popularity has increased. He has united Ukrainians against Russian military forces, and his courage has attracted the attention of people from all over the world. Many view him as a hero, valiantly fighting for his country as he pleads for help from the West. When the United States offered to transport him safely out of Ukraine, he said, I need ammunition, not a ride. Others are more critical of the comedian turned president. They have concerns that, although his personality may be charming, his policies may not be effective. At the time of making this video, the war between Russia and Ukraine rages on. Zelensky has managed to stay alive despite being targeted for assassination several times. Even though Ukrainians have fought bravely and slowed down Russian advances, they are badly outnumbered and the future is unclear. Now moving to my analysis. As would be the case for any wartime president, many people are carefully scrutinizing Zelensky's behavior. Some view him as the next Winston Churchill as he continues to make passionate speeches, desperately requesting assistance to save his besieged nation from enemy forces. He is bravely fighting for the freedom of his people. Many of his statements have emotional appeal, like when he said, freedom matters, peace matters, Ukraine matters. Others view him as in over his head, a corrupt politician who may be popular right now because of the war, but who is not prepared to lead under these circumstances. He has made requests from the West for direct military intervention, like a no-fly zone, which would possibly lead to World War III. The war in Ukraine has brought up an interesting moral dilemma for people around the world. Should other countries intervene in the war directly, or are sanctions sufficient? Should the West risk Armageddon to save one country? Who deserves to be free, and who should fight for that freedom? I was thinking about this situation, and I came up with this analogy. Let's say there was this playground outside of a school. It is shaped like a circle, with a diameter of 30 feet, so it's about 707 square feet. Not very large, but there are around 20 students crammed onto the playground. There is a slide, maybe some swings, pretty basic. They spend a lot of time there. It's an important playground to them. All the students know each other to some extent. Some are related. Some have a long history of friendship. For others, it's a history of acrimony. The relationships are complicated. Nine of the students are academically gifted. They have won many awards in the school for various projects and competitions. At some point, the school ran out of trophies, certificates of achievement, and happy face stickers, so teachers started handing out M67 fragmentation grenades. I guess this school is in a rough neighborhood. These hand grenades have a kill radius of about 16 feet and can cause injuries out to about 49 feet. The nine students who have been given the grenades carry them around all the time. Mostly, it's not considered a big deal. But when a fight breaks out on the playground, the students are understandably concerned about those grenades. Again, the diameter of the playground is 30 feet. So if one of the students pulled a pin out of a grenade and released the spoon, the explosion, which would happen about four to five seconds later, would send steel fragments across the playground. Everyone would be either killed or injured. One day, a student named Russell, who happened to have a grenade, picked a fight with his younger brother, Ulysses, who did not have a grenade. Now, Russell is considered to be a bit of a bully. The other students don't like him but generally he doesn't cause too many problems for most of the students. Initially, the other students are inclined to look the other way. After all, Russell and Ulysses are related. It's like a family dispute. Nobody wants to interfere. As Ulysses is getting punched and kicked by Russell, he starts to plead with the other students, saying things like, you should be ashamed of yourselves for not helping me. I'm really getting hurt here. Please punch Russell in the head. Don't worry about the fact that he has a grenade. He won't really use it. The other students have empathy for Ulysses. They tell Russell they are not going to work with him in group assignments anymore. They are no longer going to trade items at lunch like juice boxes and sandwiches. He will not have a date to the school dance. 
but they don't do anything directly to stop Russell. Ulysses keeps pleading with them. He is particularly poetic and charismatic. He sounds like other brave students in the past who have stood up to bullies. The students on the playground respect his courage. Every time Ulysses gets in a good shot against Russell, the other students close the distance and cheer him on. Russell puts his hand on the safety pin of his grenade and reminds the other students to back away. Ulysses does not seem to have a clear plan on how to negotiate an end to the fight. His ideas keep changing and do not seem to be well thought out. The students on the playground are nervous because this one relatively simple fight is dragging out longer than expected. Secretly, some of the students hope that Russell knocks Ulysses unconscious. They don't really want Ulysses to be hurt, but they want this whole mess to be over with. I think this analogy illustrates the moral dilemma introduced through the war between Russia and Ukraine. There are no easy answers here. If anyone uses nuclear weapons, all 7.7 .7 billion people in the world will suffer. Many will die. The population of Ukraine is 44 million. Even though that is a lot of people, it's only half of 1% of the world population. Zelensky's desperate requests challenge the ideal of freedom for everyone. I think he is trying to say that the Ukrainian people deserve freedom. They deserve to have somebody fight alongside them to get it. He is challenging the integrity of the West, essentially calling the West hypocritical for not rendering direct military assistance. His argument has persuaded many, but not many people are interested in having a nuclear war. Zelensky's personality has helped his cause. He is sentimental, humorous, full of energy, courageous, and willing to look weak. He is willing to ask for help. Looking at a potential personality profile using the five-factor model, we see that Zelensky appears to be high in openness to experience. He is artistic and non-traditional. He has mid-range conscientiousness, high extroversion, he is outgoing and talkative, high agreeableness, he is altruistic and relatively modest, and he has mid-range neuroticism. This happens to be the typical personality profile for a professional actor, so it's not really surprising. Now moving to my final thoughts. Zelensky's friendly and outgoing personality have merged with the dire circumstances in Ukraine to make him a popular leader. He may not have been an effective peacetime president, but as a wartime president, he has attracted a good deal of sympathy for the Ukrainian population. Even still, Zelensky is a performer. It is difficult to know when he is being genuine and when he is acting. I do not think that any level of performance on his part will remove all doubts about his leadership abilities. But he has certainly demonstrated the power of being likable and using social media to advance a cause. Those are my thoughts on Volodymyr Zelensky. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be as intriguing as a program designed to promote academic success using hand grenades. Thanks for watching.